Hey guys, it's Fish Shuzzy here and welcome to episode 13 of my Everton series for Football Manager 2015. This is the fixture roundup plus Manchester United live comm as you can tell by the title. Um, but first of all we'll get into the league table. As you can see, we are currently sitting in 7th position. We do have one game in hand over most of the teams above us. Um, and we sit on 20 points, so we could potentially go maybe into 4th. Um, obviously that would require Arsenal to lose or draw their game in hand that they also have, like ourselves. So yeah, we're not too far behind if we win this game in hand, we're only 3 behind the leaders at the moment, which are Chelsea and United respectively. So a massive game today, and I thought perfect game to Livecom. Um, usually I like to do a you know Europa League or Champions League Livecom at this stage of the season, but um, I think Mere United will be a much better game, and um, yeah, more to play for, definitely. Um, let me show you the Europa League group as it stands as well before we get into the fixtures. As you can see, we are coming first, tied on points with Dynamo Kiev, and then you have Spider Prague in third and St. Gallen coming last, losing all five of their games. So, yep, that's a little bit interesting. Good to see us there, and uh, Lukaku is actually the second highest goal scorer in the competition at the moment. So, yeah, that's good. All right, we're going to the fixtures now. And obviously, the previous episode was the um, preseason plus first game of the season. It was Reading. We then took on Hamilton in the Europa League playoff first leg, beat them 4 0 at home. Fairly straightforward. James McCarthy, a Lukaku brace, and Joel Campbell also on the score sheet there. We then played the, se whoops, sorry, the second leg of that, and it was a boring nil or drub match away in Scotland. Nothing much to mention there. We then went back to Premier League action and managed a one-all draw with Manchester City at home. Lukaku getting our goal after Mangala opened the scoring for uh, Man City. We then beat Sunderland 2-1 away from home. Very impressive. Phil Jagielka, then Jordan Ayew for Sunderland and Mbai Niang getting the winning goal and all three points for us there. We could only manage a nil-all draw at home to Dynamo Kiev in the first group game of the Europa League, so that was pretty disappointing. But we did bounce back with a 4-2 victory over Arsenal at home in the league. Rabiot, Matip and a brace from Niang getting us our three points there against very credible opposition. We then played the Capital One Cup third round and beat Birmingham 2-1. Uh, fairly impressive result. I did play a fairly strong team um, in that one. James McCarthy and Kevin Morelas, and uh, I think Eva Benega played his first game for the club there, and um, didn't play too well. The next game was Hull. We managed a four-all draw away from home. Pretty exciting game, um, but it was a bit of a disappointing result, I have to admit. Um, I wouldn't really say that Hull are, you know, that good of a team. They have got some fairly decent players, but I, I do believe that my team is actually better. Barkley, a brace from McGeady and Matip on the score sheet for us. And then they had Traore, El Mohamedy, Livermore and Luco for themselves, with El Mohamedy picking up Man of the Match performance, which is hilarious, as he's actually quite poor in real life, I believe. We then faced Spider Prague and obviously beat them 4-0 away from home in the Czech Republic. Eva Benega getting his first goal for the club there. Lukaku brace and Ada McGiddy once again on the score sheet. We then lost to Chelsea, which was our first loss of the actual season. Pretty disappointing, but I mean, Chelsea are an absolute world class team at the moment on the game, so it's a bit of a fair result, I suppose. As you can see, they went 2 0 up. Got a player sent off before they scored their second goal through Quadrado. Um, Joel Campbell got one back for us, but as you can see, we got absolutely dominated in the shots department, and um, yeah, probably should have lost a bit more. They were still dominating us after they got that red card. We then, again, disappointingly, got another nil-all draw, this time coming at home to West Brom. Um, not the ideal result after that loss, but yeah, at least we didn't concede a goal, and we kept a clean sheet, I guess is the only real positive there. We then beat St. Gallant 5-0 in the Europa League. Joel Campbell with a hat-trick there, Kostas Manolas getting his first goal for the club, and Romelu Lukaku also getting a penalty for himself. Uh, Z Antonio was sent off for them, so yeah, fairly straightforward, but I assume we probably would have won anyway if they had the 11 men. We then bounced back in the league with a 3-2 win over Crystal Palace. Bit of an exciting game, as you can see. Lukaku almost had a hat-trick, but he did miss a penalty, 
and Morales got on the score sheet as well, pretty much setting up all of uh, Lukaku's goals. Um, yeah. We then face QPR in the Capital One Cup fourth round. As you can see, 4-0 victory. Lukaku finally got his hat-trick in this game, then got substituted off, and the Yang came on and scored a goal for himself as well. A one all draw at, um, at home to Stoke was the next result. Lukaku opened the scoring before Tom Ince got one back with their only shot and target. St. Gallen was up again in the you know reverse fixture of the group stage, um, and we managed a 4-1 victory here. Leighton Baines and another Lukaku hat-trick, getting us another three points in the group. We then could only manage a one-all draw with Wigan away from home in the league, which was very disappointing as they were actually coming 19th at the time. And as you can see, Sammy Amiobi opened some scoring for Wigan before Mbai Niang got one back and uh, shared the points, but we probably should have won that game as we were the better team. Bournemouth, the newly taken over Tycoon team, is our next fixture to go through. And as you can see, a 6-3 victory to us. Um, we finally beat them. I think they had won two games over us, actually. But as you can see, Lukaku getting four goals in this game. Um, Joel Campbell getting on the score sheet as well as James McCarthy. Um, Andrew Sermon getting a brace for Bournemouth and Sully March also on the score sheet for them. And they are building quite a decent team, actually. Um, at the end of the transfer window, they actually signed players like uh, Theophil Catherine, or Catherine, or however you pronounce his name. I'll show you their team at the moment. Some of the players that I, I forgot to um, mention in the previous um, episode, they've got players like this guy, who's a fairly decent young star, I suppose, and he's worth quite a bit as well. Um, yeah, Solly March, that was one of the players that scored. Uh, they've got Yedlin now. I think I might have mentioned him, I'm not sure. Um, who's this guy? Well, he's actually a half-decent striker. I mentioned Sarko, Stanislas. There's uh, Teofil Katerin. Obviously, they signed Gibson from me. Uh, Pocignoli is another very good player. Very good left-back. And, yeah... Um, Wilson's decent as well. I think he's, what, the Manchester United player? No, I I actually went over that in the last episode, didn't I? Anyway, so yeah, they're, they're, they are building a decent team, and I think in a few seasons' time, they're probably going to be a, you know, Europa League contender um, as far as the league goes. Anyway, the next game was obviously a nil-all drub match with Dynamo Kiev again, actually, this time coming away from home. And if we go up here, as you can see, the first game was a nil-all draw. So both games against Dynamo Kiev have ended as nil-all draws. For whatever reason, I don't really know why we can't score against them. Um, I guess I am just happy that we haven't, you know, conceded against them either. Um, but I do believe we should be beating them. Anyway, that is the fixtures rounded up. Let's go through the lineup today. Um, just making sure that it's all right before I advance. Yeah, it looks to be. Alright, so we've got Howard in goals. John Stones will play right back. He's been um, playing there most of the season. And um, I feel much more confident playing him at right back than I do um, playing Coleman there. And uh, Coleman is actually quite fatigued as well anyway. Um, then we've got Jakey Elka and Mateep. Mateep has been absolutely outstanding so far. And I mean, I expect nothing less. Um, those of you that have watched my Monaco series... Uh, would would know that Mateep was an absolute beast for me. And um, he stayed at the club for, like, I think nearly 10 seasons or something like that. Maybe even more, actually. I'm not sure. He, I think he left the club at 33 or 32 or something like that. Um, after I signed him, I think, the second season. So, yeah. Joe Gielka hasn't been that great. Um, we'll have a look at his profile very quickly. He's 34 years old now, so stats are decreasing quite a bit. So we're going to have to move him on as well, which is the reason behind me signing uh, Kostas Menelis, um, who also has played very well, but I have played him in the um, Europa League and more of the easier cup games as well. Um, Baines will be left back today. Um, Oviedo has played quite a few games. He obviously played the last one um, as his conditioning is very low, but he, I've been very impressed with both of them, to be fair. Baines has scored a couple of free kicks, I think, and um, yeah, quite happy with that. We've got McCarthy and Rabio in our centre of midfield. Um, Lucas Romero is actually injured at the moment, which is disappointing because he did start to find decent form um, in the you know last few games. I think he's been out two games injured. The uh, Dynamo Kiev game and the Bournemouth game, he was out. 
We've got Morales as right winger, Campbell as our left winger as always, Barkley sitting in front as our AMC, and Lukaku as ever present up front. Pacheco, Manolas, Oviedo, Green, who is a youth player, is fairly decent, uh, central attacking mid. Um, Eva Beniga, might just swap these two around like that. Ada Migidi and Niang. And I have loaned out Nigelov just for a month to uh, Preston. They were going to play him as a first team player. And I don't think they have even played him in a game yet. Oh, yes, they have. Two games. And as you can see, he's played very, very well for them, so that's good. He will be an absolute wonder kid in the future as well. I'm going to start blooding him in to the actual first team um, very, very soon. Alright, so let's go. We have Manchester United at Old Trafford today, so, you know, it is a very difficult game to say the least, but I would, you know, be quite quietly confident. I was going to say quite confident, but I'm not actually that confident in my ability to beat Manchester United with players like Rooney. I think Van Persie's still there even. Um, you know, Di Maria, I mean De Gea, as you can see. 17 goals in 19 games that he's played in, so, yeah. Anyway, um, the other lineup today is Gross Kruitz, Evans, Rojo, and Shaw, with a midfield of Carrick, Ward, Prowse, Blind, with Marta in front, and Hernandez and Wayne Rooney up front, so, some absolute firepower in that team. Um, I'm just going to say go out and enjoy yourselves today, and we'll try and fire them up as much as we can. Come on, boys, let's do this. It's not a bad reaction there, other players. Okay, here we go. They are playing with a mm, fairly narrow formation, I believe, using those uh, wing backs of Shaw and Gross Kruitz. So hopefully we can actually, you know, get a bit of a, a bit of flankage going on today and try and stretch them out quite wide. And get our fullbacks, you know, getting a bit more forward. And Hernandez is in behind already. And he's blasted that shot wide. Good to see, although worrying signs early on so far. Rebio's already picked up a yellow card as well. We have a corner. It's cleared away though. Barkley will get to it. Baines again crosses. Campbell. Morales. Oh, Morales gets on the back. Is that offside? No, it's not. 1-0 up. Kevin Morales in the 17th minute. Great start. Great start. I thought that might have been offside on, on his second rebound. Um, sorry, on his first shot. Hernandez is in behind once again. 1-1 one -on -one with the keeper. And he's missed it again. Wow. Okay. Very, very worrying sign so far. Um, I'm going to leave it like this until half time, and then I might change my mentality. Just because I, I'm not too confident in trying to control the game at Old Trafford against Manchester United. So, we might look to change that in a minute. Hopefully we don't concede here, that would be absolutely devastating. Howard, obviously a former Manchester United player, many, many years ago. A lot of people don't actually know that. Lukaku, come on, son. Gets in! 2-0! Lukaku. Looked like he hasn't done a thing all game, and then pops up with another goal this season in the 41st minute against Manchester United. Absolutely brilliant. And I think we will... I don't know. Should I change it? Or I think we'll just leave it on at the moment, because we are playing pretty well. Maybe till about the 30th minute... Uh, Sorry, another 15 minutes into this half. And we'll assess it a bit more then. Baines isn't playing too well either, so we might look to take him off fairly soon. And bring Oviedo on, despite him being a bit low in conditioning. I am quite happy with how things are at the moment, though. So I might not make a change. And they've just brought Yen Vertonghen on for Johnny Evans, so that's interesting, but... Alright, well, we're going to make a sub now. We'll bring George Green on for Ross Barkley. He's picked up a knock. 
Um, I want to leave Campbell out there and Lukaku out there as well. Because I feel that if I sub them two off, problems could arise. And me and I have a corner here. Vertonghen gets a goal back for me United. And that's his first goal of the season as well. I knew him coming on was going to cause a bit of a problem. But can we hold on? Oh no, they've got a throw. Lukaku takes it away. McCarthy pumps it long. Straight to Vertonghen though. Yenna's eyes in behind. No. No. Take it. Yes. Come on, boys. Play it. Just play it. There we go. There we go. McCarthy. To Lukaku. Play go. Green. Can he get a goal? Crosses Campbell. Oh. Cross Cruz cuts it out. Fabio back to McCarthy. Exciting scenes here. We're moving the ball very well. Green to Lukaku. Ooh. What a tackle, though. That tackle. Green again. Oh, off the post. Off the post by Green there. Oh, the youngster could have gotten a goal against Manchester United. Baines with the corner. And that's cleared away by Rooney. Oh, and he keeps it in. Mata. Oh, that, that's Rabio all day long. Hopefully this is full time. Come on, ref, blow the whistle. Please, mate. We've got a throw here through Baines, and that is full-time 2-1 victory over Manchester United. That will put us quite high up the ladder. We're actually going to only be... Well, we potentially have a game in hand over Manchester United as well, so we could basically be level with them at the moment. As you can see, they are still on 26 points. We're on 23 now, currently sitting in fourth spot. So if we win our game in hand, we could be level on points with Manchester United. Coming up to the December, well, the month of December, I should, uh, should say. So very, very impressive victory there, guys. If that doesn't, you know, get a like, I don't really know what will. It is an amazing result, especially from my team against a team like Manchester United. And, um, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. I have actually enjoyed it very much so. I don't get to play a lot of Football Manager these days. Um, so when I play, it's, you know... A lot of the um, excitement and enjoyment of the game has come back to me. Because when you play and you play and you play over and over again, um, yeah, it just takes away a bit of the fun. And then playing, you know, sporadically, you know, after work, every now and then. I don't know, it, it's really fun and it really has brought the enjoyment back. Um, and I'm really excited to try and do as many videos as I can, um, as frequently as I can. I know... Um, you know, things in my life have changed a little bit. Um, but yeah, um, I'm rambling on now, so I'm going to end the episode here, guys. Please drop a like, and if you're a new viewer, please subscribe to my channel. And um, yeah, check out my IAC series as well. Um, a new episode of that will be out fairly soon as well. Um, I do have three episodes out at the moment, if you are, you know, a new viewer. It is a Dutch-only players series with IAC, so yeah, check that out, subscribe. Give the video a like and uh, drop a comment if you would like to. Um, I do appreciate all comments. Um, I really love to interact with you guys as well. And uh, yeah, that's it guys. Goodbye.